Potter's Journal, my winter 2018 um, pottery production has come to an end. Um, um, it does stretch into spring, but then so did winter this year. Um, the cold's still here in April. Um, but uh, there are still a lot of pots to fire, and it's probably a good time now to take a review, not just of when they come out of the kiln, but uh, after yeah, being able to sit back and maybe figure out just what happened and uh, what you like and don't like and why and how and the rest of it. Um, let's uh, see what's going on in the studio this evening. Okay, so I may have forgot what happened last year uh, when I looked at these two mugs. And the two glazes we're looking at today are standard ceramics, um, snow on brick used mostly on the bottoms, and they're sea mist used mostly on the tops and the insides. Um, but uh, what happened last year, I did save these two mugs because we had one with a uh, lighter stoneware cone six um, and one with the, the one I'm using this year called uh, hazelnut and these are um, and, and the third one that I didn't really try yet this year a specked one also a standard clay and I'm using the clays and hopefully a few glazes because they're 20 minutes away I don't have to pay any shipping um, but here, this is also with, so here's just a variation, look at that, with uh, two different clay bodies. Um, and with the white slip underneath it. I'm also using the glazes, uh, okay, and the spect. Um, and an idea, too, of what the slip looks like, which um, I think I demoed on a mug early this winter. But I'm also using the glazes much thinner than is meant to be. I believe uh, they're meant to look more like uh, the cream. It's called snow on brick. I don't know why, but it's meant to look more like a creamy mocha. That name's probably been used on about a dozen other glazes, so um, it was probably already taken. But um, people often, uh, you know, ask the question, why is this glaze not coming out the way it's supposed to? So there it is on three clay bodies. And then, let's see what's back here. I um, pulled some 30-year piled pots out of a kiln shed last year. This is the same glaze on uh, probably a higher fire, probably a cone 9 clay body. Uh, but I have no idea what it was, but, um, yeah, very different once again. And I think the one I like the best on a reclaimed clay, um, which here we can see not totally um, wedged through, and a marbled effect, um, which um, I described last year when I pulled out of it and was uh, kind of taken aback and whoa what is that flashing from the fire as I unloaded the oxidation kiln um, those two do have a different glaze on the top but I um, kind of uh, went for the sea mist um, um, but I did have some problems with some bubbling and here it is on yeah one of last year's <laughs> supposed to be prize pieces larger pieces and a lot of that look at that and um but um since this piece i uh, made a few changes i've um i think they recommended taking the bisque up higher i was doing um an 04, I'm sorry, an 05, and uh, I'm now taking the bisque up to a 04. So I'm taking the bisque up um, a cone higher. Also, the uh, taking the end of the firing a lot slower and um, giving it a soaking at the end. 
but after having the magic with uh, a couple of reclaimed clay bodies I did the same thing this year and at first glance um, yeah I just couldn't imagine or you know couldn't be more pleased with what I got um, this out of a uh, cone 6 oxidation getting things that reminded me of things that I had pulled out of um, of uh, salt kilns over the years, and here's some variation too on the on the sea, uh, the um, oh the um, sea mist on the inside coming out more bluey here than the blue green um, on the uh, um, on the later the other clay bodies. However, <laughs> however, it wasn't all a success here. That once again, my good pieces that I really um, wanted to get, um, I had some problems with the reclaimed clay, that there was um, some bloating. I'm going to, um, and, and it was maybe a bit um, um, stretching the limit to where the clay could have been taken. There was probably some redware clay in here, which the darker um, yeah, clays did great things over here. But I think last year I knew that they were both, that they were actually, yeah, a mix of um, probably these three and standard very dark clay body that comes out almost black. Um, that's not it there either. Um, but uh, the bloating probably due to some organic matter because I found a bucket mixing all the things that I knew were um, yeah clean and okay a bucket that sat out in the back for many many years but um, yeah if it wasn't for that um, yeah the things happening in the surface there and almost the body of the clay becoming a bit fluid itself is um, was not a problem but, um, so once again I did I did scale them down this year a little bit since uh, the um, uh, pieces I wanted to yeah wanted to make <laughs> um, are eluding me. Um, I scaled them down a bit to, as a test first. But, uh, yeah, nice things happening there. If I only <laughs> I was almost to what I wanted, but a few problems. Um, not all of them are um, uh, unusable. Um, a lot of them are okay. But, um, and it was probably not the thing for the uh, yarn ball crowd. But, uh, um, yeah, something uh, a little safer and cleaner. Okay, and here we got it again on what I'm using now is the, the hazelnut clay body. And I'm also I'm using the glaze thinner than it's meant to be, um, so that it breaks, so that we get the darker and the lighter. Um, and uh, okay, as we can see on the inside of these bowls, I use the little berry colanders as test glaze pieces. Um, um, letting the the using it thinner, allowing it to pull in the ridges and even break from dark to light. Okay, the uh, I also find that I like the uh, sea mist over the snow on brick where the two come together as opposed to the other way around. Okay, and here yeah, the way it's probably meant to look. The creamy mocha. Um, but um, even here, I had yeah, it broke for me a bit in the the wavy patterns in the bottom. Okay, but I'm um, used very very thin on the double ball, um, and with just just getting a you know the brown and um, not much of the the mocha in the uh, snow on brick. Okay, but the uh, sea mist pretty much. Um, you know, not a problem ever, anyway. Um, and uh, there it is on the tops and the insides on the hazelnut clay that I've been using this year, and then on those uh, overfired, reclaimed pieces over here, a bit bluer.
rolling along. Yeah, we'll do a couple more glaze reviews on my uh, two of my own and uh, blended glaze used with some slips. Those pieces are here waiting to be glazed and get in the next kiln. Um, and this was supposed to be in the next, uh, the kiln we're going to unload now, the sea mist uh, on the top over the um, oh, orchid pots. Um, this was supposed to be in this kiln. I stayed up late glazing and um, lo to load a kiln. And uh, after doing the pieces that had to go in, I forgot the pieces that really um, did need to go in. Okay, in the journal today, to get the firing right for that snow on brick, I've been taking notes every firing on uh, going, you know, with a... How, how fast and often to turn things up, so I'm waiting yet to put a big star on one of those uh, film schedules. But, um, yeah, let's see what is in the kiln today. I think it's a continuation. Oh, it's not a continuation of what uh, we were talking about, but okay, here's the uh, sea mist or the uh, snow on brick again. Hmm. Um, um, yeah, very mocha y mocha, but um, yeah, breaking nicely on the lines here, and also in the lines I put in the ridge on the baker. Okay, piece of my niece. These, I guess, are for the next review. High plate. Something else we'll look at in the next one. I think this was mostly. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, okay, the sea mist again on the pie plate, and uh, pulling in the uh, ridge that I put in the fluting, and, okay, and yeah, I thinned it down, I think earlier in the year, I had it too thick, and, um, now, yeah, that's working out a little better. Okay. And hopefully there's uh, some... Oh, I had to remake these uh, lids. They were too small the first time. Hopefully there's some garlic jars in here that those belong with. And, let's see. Oh, my niece's pieces. Okay, yeah, the sea mist on her uh, lace and doily imprints here um, is pulling in there and showing off the work real nice. Um, the first, when she did this at school, she carved all those lines through underglazes. And this um, is working out good for her. Okay, yeah. The, uh, okay. And uh, no bubbling this time. The the hazelnut and the sea mist. Another pie. And oh, I forgot. I had m more of the reclaimed clay. Um, my, when I uh, good on the uh, <coughs> double bowls. And um, this time it didn't bloat, um, and it looks okay. So. Uh, I had several batches of reclaimed, and I think maybe I'll be okay on the rest. Okay, yeah, cut off. Here we are back. Um, um, yeah, double bowls. Um, that reclaimed clay is... Uh, the, the rest of it looks like it's going to work out okay here. Okay, we're not to the bottom yet, so... Oh, um, here we go. It's, um, yeah. Okay, good. Um, you know what? Maybe this is the, uh, kiln -less, uh, firing schedule that we put the star on. Um, let's see. This is the one that... Okay, four, um, um, yeah, there's seven, not to eight notches to turn up, or, or no, eight or nine, and I turned it up to eight notch number eight and it looks like seven eight it looks like the end uh, the firing went very slow because at one point I fell asleep 
and um, left three hours in between uh, one of the last turnups. Um, so the end of the firing had, did, yeah, I guess time for the glaze to mature nicely. And, um, hmm. Okay, there's even something that uh, dripped off of the lid, or the roof of either the salt or the wood kiln. So I don't know where or how, how that happened. <laughs> um, wait a minute. No, I don't think anything dripped off of here, but that's a possibility, too. Uh, maybe that could happen in electric kiln. Um, oh, wow. Um, good. Um, and uh, the lids that we did twice actually do fit on here this time. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to put a star on that firing. Hopefully we've got it that... Um, there's no bubbling. Um, that uh, when yeah you ask how come oh okay um, I wanted oh this is okay too I don't like the face mugs with um the I, I like them a solid color I don't like them with the top but um, yeah that's not bad I wanted to try this combination the um, um, the snow on brick. Oh, and this is oh wow! This is that reclaimed clay. I thought that looked kind of dark, and uh, the extra bluey on the inside. And okay, just with the solid sea sea mist. Um, for some reason, it looks a little bit thicker on this one. Um, I'm not sure that I'm crazy about the blue, solid blue, and here with just the um, snow on brick. So, when, uh, yeah, somebody says, why are these glazes not coming out like the test pieces or the pictures in the books and the catalogs? Um, a lot's going to depend on the firing and on the clay body. So, uh, a lot of variation out of a cone 6 oxidation kiln. Okay. okay, batteries went out, so that lets me come back for a postscript. Um, and uh, to sum up, saying this was really about two different glazes. And um, the question is why they don't always do what we expect them to. Well, that was on six different clay bodies and a huge amount of variation. But uh, sometimes it could be. Um, the materials change and are mined from a different place or no longer available. And something else is you. This is standard um, fog and came out nothing like I was expecting. Um, and YouTube's Janice the Potter she ex said she experienced the same thing. So, um, um, yeah, variations on a glaze by clay body. Um, and um, um, she also said she did a face mug. Okay, how about that? That was fun to do. Um, I was glad to uh, share um, an idea with uh, someone who's shared so much about glazes. And um, just like the glazes, uh, variations on a clay body, Every artist will bring their own vision to the face mug and, uh, you know, their unique uh, variation and vision. Mine were influenced mostly by the um, Potters of the South um, and I will be uploading in November um, a series, okay, a secret jug series um, that uh, will include some face jugs. Um, so do stop back for that. Uh, check out for now my video on the face mugs. Um, and I'll even put a link up there to Janice the Potters and you can see her vision.